Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So I want to talk about how society and culture treat men and why. Because it's not right. It's wrong. And because it has been normalized, like, oh, this is just the way it is, we don't even see it. The men don't see it coming up and the women don't see it. So they just indulge in it. Society itself does not see it, although the institutions and the people essentially running things are well aware of it. So I think if we can have a little insight as to what's going on and why, then I think we'll have uh, some tools, some ability to navigate and perhaps, you know, not be caught off by this situation. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing, you know, to consider, and this is harsh, is that the stronger and the better a man is, the greater of a target he becomes. Consider the treatment of Trump, all right? Put aside whether or not you like or you approve or you agree. Put aside those things for, for just a moment. This is not a proper way to treat somebody. I understand politics, okay? You're not, you're not giving your opponent an inch, okay? Any good thing they do, you're portraying it in a negative light. I understand. However, when the very basis of reality has to be compromised in order for a person to push their ideology, and that's where we're at with the extreme left right now, you're asking people to betray their own mind in order to go along with your argument. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. Politically, they've got a reason to go along with you, okay? So, you know, everybody who is upset by the fact that a good, strong man is capable and worthy, which by definition, that's that's what it is, they're coming after that man. They resent that man. They're just as good as that man. They can do anything that that man can do, right? This is the line. So you understand that a huge part of this is being driven by envy and resentment, you know, so, so it's a person who can't really make it onto the team, you know, saying, I'm just as good as these other players. Men love this stuff, okay? You know, it's hard for everybody at first, but then as a man finds his way and finds the things that he's good at, it becomes an opportunity to distinguish himself, even at the cost of possibly losing and all the suffering. That means very little to a man, but the accomplishment and the achievement, that means a great deal to a man. It's interesting because it's essentially the reverse for the woman, right? So it, it's crazy because the men, they just want to be of service, okay? They just want to be acknowledged for their sacrifice. They just want to be valued for the fact that there are things that they can do that nobody in their right mind would do. And for that individual man, in this individual circumstance, what would frighten and deter most all people, to him, is a source of pride and accomplishment. I have over overcome my fear. I have felt fear. I have gone into the darkness and I have walked through the darkness. This is the goal. This is, this is what men want, all right? Men are not ones to come to the darkness and to turn and run away from the darkness and to never look to the darkness again. That is not a man's way, all right? If a man does that, he gets to live with nightmares for the rest of his life, okay? <laughs> this is and and this is stuff that most men figure out as 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 infants, as as children. If you don't figure it out by the time you're, you know, a toddler, uh, you you're going to have some hard times. If you don't figure it out by the time you're a young child, oh, it's going to be a horrible time. If you don't figure it out by the time, you know, you're getting into young adulthood, that's going to be a sad young adulthood. And if you don't figure it out by the time that you are actually in adulthood, I don't know that physically, that mentally, whether or not the person can even be healthy at this point, you know? And this is one of the tragedies that we're seeing. We're seeing you know, the dropping of testosterone, the, the physical, uh, the physical destruction of the men, you know, the, the attitude. So, so you're seeing women walking around like truck drivers, you know, with their, with their chests out, <laughs> right? Looking around, scanning the horizon. Like if they see something, they're going to, you know, lock on, eye stock, get close, chase, grab. They're not. They see something in the distance, they're going in the other direction. So you've raised, a, you know, generations of men that are punished for being masculine and encouraged and rewarded for being feminine. And 
now you've got nobody to protect your borders. Now you've got nobody to build your fences. Now you've got nobody to go into the darkness. Envy, resentment, greed. These are the emotions driving the attack on men. The attack on Trump is merely symbolic. It, in other words, if you can sit down in your household and watch a half an hour news program that just lies and misrepresents even the most basic aspects of reality in order to tear down this particular man. What do you think is going on there? I mean, do you think it's just that man, right? It's like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, we're, we're just picking on that man, but other men, they're okay. No, it's the message that says, if you step out of line, if you assert yourself as a man, if you move with confidence, we're coming after you and we will use these attacks, toxic masculinity, racist, sexist, homophobe, Islamophobe, anything you try to do as a man where you set your standards and your values, okay, understand that this is part of the definition of a man, okay, anything you do to set your standards and values will be attacked. And you will be attacked so so much that if you don't give it up, yes, that, that is one of the key phrases that you need to understand is being said to you. Give it up. Stop. Stop with your attitude of a free, independent, strong, worthy, virtuous individual. Stop. That's the message. Give that up. Become part of the group. Identity politics. Toxic masculinity. Shall you be dominated by your fear, by fear of punishment, or shall you be defined by your ambitions, by your goals? Understand, without ambitions and without goals, there can be no accomplishment, no achievement. All you can get is relief. All you can say to yourself is, ooh, thank goodness I wasn't fired today. Thank goodness I wasn't falsely accused today. Thank goodness one of the women didn't get offended by me looking at them today. Ooh, that was a close call. I dodged a bullet there. That's the height. That's the top of men's experience experience right now. Thank God they didn't beat me. Thank God they didn't try to kill me. And I have news for you. Respectfully and compassionately, they will. Give it time and they will come after you. If you can distinguish yourself in any way as a man, unless it's within a group of men, they will come after you. And if it's within a group of men, they will compete with you. <laughs> But they'll do so openly, right? So I'm a better quarterback than you. And then they will, you know, go after it. There might even be some underhanded interpersonal aggression in there. But the bulk of it would be on merit, on who can do the job. That's not the world you live in today. That's not the world that we live in today. And it's killing the motivation of the men. Why should I compete when the top salesman is just going to be the prettiest girl? That's it. She's the top salesman. Has nothing to do with her sales. So you've destroyed the motivation of the men because you've treated them unfairly. And they are wise to walk away. But going your own way is not as easy as it sounds or as saying it. It's easy to say. It's a little more difficult to actually do. You know, this can go straight into uh, Nietzsche's Ubermensch, right? He's, he himself says it. It's like, no, we are not the Ubermensch. We cannot become the Ubermensch. But we can take a step in that direction. The philosophy of, you know, political freedom, the idea of freedom itself, that individuals are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, chiefly life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This idea, okay, is the engine of humanity, right? So if I want you to till the land and to build the land, okay, all we have to say to you is the benefit of the work of this land goes to you. This is your land. And if you work it and you do it right, you reap the benefits of this work. That's motivated self-interest. So now the man or anybody, even an animal, works for its own improvement. Wow, isn't that selfish? No, this is the engine. This is the driving force. This is how we align. We align our interests and then we work together. Do we have aligned interests like a fair and open society where a well-meaning, well-intentioned, well-behaved person can make progress and sustain their lives and build a future? Is this a worthy shared goal? I think it is because 99% of people will pursue this avenue. And assuming that, you know, the streets are clean and uh, <clears throat> we've taken care of the roads, they can make their way. But of course, they cannot make their way anymore, can they? They cannot afford, they cannot afford a house. They cannot afford a car. They cannot afford food. 
They cannot afford clothing. They cannot afford the basic maintenance of their own daily lives. Is this a male problem? Is this a, is this a problem of toxic masculinity? No, it's not. This is a problem of greed, of abuse, of using human beings as human capital. Now, we are human capital, and we should be used, but, but motivated self-interest needs to be, you know, at the heart and the core of it. So they're taking cheap shots at the men, the very ones who build their future. This is why, you know, it, it's not a good long-term strategy <laughs> to, to build women up, you know. It's just not. I know this sounds so cruel, and many of you are listening to this and saying, Howard Dare, you're... It's, that's a tra tradcon sexist way of looking at the world. There's no point in building up a woman to become the quarterback of the team. She's not going to be the quarterback of the team, okay? I don't need to teach her how to fight. She's not going to fight. I don't need to equip her to be a soldier. She's not going to be a soldier. I don't need to equip her to be, you know, a master brain surgeon. She's not going to be a master brain surgeon. She's going to quit and she's going to have children. And that's what we need, okay? We've got people to do those other jobs and they're good at it. She doesn't need to be a secret service agent. Can the individual women do these things? Sure, yeah, no problem. I, I mean, yeah, it's a huge problem. <laughs> it's a huge deal, right? For a woman to be able to compete with a man, wow. Uh, but some of them can do it and they earn their place. But to give them jobs that they are not worthy of, that they cannot perform because we're trying to be socially fair and just, that's what's going on. So you realize you've killed motivated self-interest now for the men. There's, there's no reason for the men to participate. He can't win a gold star. He cannot, he can't build himself up in this world. You've made that, you know, a sign of toxic masculinity. You've made, you know, you've made this highest virtue for the man, this, you know, what would be a badge of honor and pride. You've turned into a badge of shame, something that he has to hide from. And so now the young men, they're lost. They, they don't know what direction to go in. And as society and culture tries to portray positive male role models, you know, like a strong leader, okay, or like a successful businessman, like a successful inventor, as these men make their way in the world, society, culture, media, tear them down and ascribe you know, the worst motivations to them. So that these motivations that the men feel, they're now shamed. They're now, you know, a mark of shame that they have to cover up and hide and not reveal to other people. And not only are we doing this, it's, it's kind of become normalized. It's like intrinsic. And I know this kind of sounds judgmental, all right? But men are not women. Men are not supposed to act like women. If I meet a man and he's not, you know, just a boy yet, <coughs> excuse me, and he demonstrates feminine qualities, I'm not impressed. I'm not like, wow, that's a really sensitive man. Uh, that's a really thoughtful man. The idea of being weak for a man, it's not a virtue. For a woman, it is. You know, this is part of their appeal, right? They're pretty, they're attractive. You want to protect them. This is not a quality for a man. <laughs> it's a quality for a baby. That's fine. You know, for a child, that's okay. You know, I think women want to be cherished, and I think men want to be appreciated. And you can kind of understand this from the idea that the male, whether, you know, human, whatever, is ideally suited for acts of physical service, for doing things. He's stronger, faster, less emotion. So there's less fear going on there. It's still there, but it's less. So he's biologically suited to do this. He naturally wants to do it. He wants to lead. He wants to serve. He wants to sacrifice. He wants to build. He wants to protect the people around him. You know, look at a baby boy. You know, and you say to him, what do you want to be when you grow up? He'll tell you, man. He wants to be a hero. He wants to be a, wants to be a fireman. He wants to be a soldier. He wants to be an airplane pilot. He wants to do these acts of bravery and service and sacrifice, even if it might cost him his life. Because the appreciation, this acceptance, this... This group interaction is fundamental to being a man. And you recognize that that is what's been taken away from the men. Do women have this? You know, there are times when this kind of an instinct does kick in, but it's not their primary driving force, is it? No, much more nurturing, much more taking care of, much more beautifying the environment around them, much more looking to the well-being of the people around them. Not stepping into danger, not stepping into pain, not a physical 
not a physical act of sacrifice, not, not in the idea of putting themselves in danger, putting themselves into sight of harm's way. This is not, this is not their way. You want to pretend like it is. So you want to pretend like women have the qualities of men, which is largely aggression, okay? And it's not an evil, bad aggression. You need aggression, okay? You, you need it to protect things, you know? You just need to know when to use it and when not to. And women, whose primary feeling is nurturing, caregiving, improvement, <laughs> beautification. This is their primary driving force. Now you want to say they're interchangeable? All right. Well, if you do that, you're going to come up short. All right. You're going to come up short. Now, the men are not trying to fulfill the female roles. There's no desire, you know, the division of labor. There might be some weird psychological stuff going on, but, you know, no, this is not the case. The women do want some of the male masculine energy. They want to, haha, not get pregnant, right? Of course, you know, so there's your birth control. So now we're equalizing, you know, between men and women. But of course we're not, you know, like this is just one aspect of it. The whole biology, the whole physiology is still there. Well, many women and many people are trying to get rid of this with, you know, basically your trans movement transhuman. It's not just transsexual. It's transhuman. Got to augment the people with, you know, mechanical, biological devices and pharmaceuticals and cybernetics at some point. So it's not just the women wanting to overcome being female. It's all people. Well, you know, it's both men and women wanting to overcome being human. Does that mean? Well, that means, you see, this is the sad part. You know, like you're thinking, wow, this is a next stage of evolution. No, it's not. It's a step backwards, all right? Because what they want is they want to be able to indulge all of their whims and feelings and not have to pay any sort of physical price. Yes, they want that science fiction movie where they are pure consciousness and pure pleasure. Of course, this is not a physical reality, you know, and it doesn't take people long to, you know, gain the insight into this, that if you just try to eat all the time and feel good, you're going to become sick. If you just try to indulge feeling good all the time, you're going to become very weak and sick and damaged. So it's not, it's not a worthy human ambition to be able to do whatever you want and get whatever you want and not have to pay any price for it. This is, this is a perversion, you know, of what people want. We think it's what we want. Like we don't want to do the hard work and the sacrifice necessary to lift ourselves up out of the stage of an animal existence because it's hard work. But we do know that existing as an animal, it's not the height of human existence. I understand there, there are times when survival is all that you can focus on, but we have a higher, you know, thing driving us, or at least we're supposed to. Well, I don't know about that. We can, we can have that. You can have that if you want. But if you don't have the basic physical needs, you know, this is uh, Manslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Like if you don't have enough food and shelter, well, you're not gonna be too concerned with philosophy, are you? So the abuse of men has to do with envy and jealousy and wanting to step out, uh, subvert the natural sacrifices and requirements of life, okay? So, you know, whenever you're meeting up with somebody with this basic ideology, you know, and we, we ourselves hold on to this too. Like I, I do want a whole bunch of stuff for free and I don't want to have to work for it. I do want that. <laughs> However, I know that it's not, it's not reasonable. You know, it's like a fantasy. It's like a fairy godfather kind of situation. Uh, so there's this, uh, there's this hook, okay? Consumer society, mass media, marketing. Yes, we can all be hooked because there's all these basic human wants and needs that we have and we have to struggle with. But if you're aware of them, you can, to a large degree, not be maneuvered by them. And then you can focus your efforts in the areas that actually do matter to you, which would be your personal you know, well-being for the most part, your psychological and emotional state. But it's very hard to uh, focus on that <clears throat> when you're under siege. Men's lives are lived like within a castle, a walled castle with strong walls, and they are under siege. They are surrounded. Nobody's getting in. Nobody's getting out. There's no water. There's no food. There's no reinforcements coming to break the siege. You have to break the siege from within. And yes, you are surrounded. 
you know, this would suggest that your answers do not lie outside of you, but rather within you. Look within. Find your strength and your power. And it may just be a small seed at this stage. Nurture that small seed. And I know that while people are going out and uh, doing their things and having a good time, and you're just nurturing a small little seed within you, you'll be like, wow, this isn't life. But that small little seed will grow. It can grow. And when it does, if you've done it right, it becomes self-sustaining. So whatever growth this seed generates, the growth itself generates additional growth. The gift of life, the miracle of life. This is your, this is your investment. This is the geometric doubling, okay? Of, of what you're doing on the daily basis. This is your garden. This is your farm, not the outside place. You can do things outside and you can get great results. And I'm sure you will, but I'm also sure that, you know, there'll be some failures. There'll, there'll be some things that don't work out. How depressed, how demotivated is that going to make you? What energy is that going to take away from the basic seed of your being? How much of these types of considerations, MGTOW, culture, society, politics, media, entertainment, social interactions, how much of this is going to tap into your life energy itself? The energy that keeps you motivated all alone. You know that there's a concerted effort to divert your attention away from you, your life, your people, the things that you can do to make your life better, the growth, okay? But there is an effort to take your attention away from that and to put it onto these meaningless external things that have nothing to do with you. Like, what do you think women think about you? There's a long series of thoughts that get to go on, huh? Further, when I say divert, I don't mean attract your attention and capture it and then direct it into a different direction. Nah, bro, that's not what I mean. When I mean, all I, the only thing that they have to do is rile up your emotions a tiny, tiny little bit. That is all. I could show you a red screen, and I don't mean me. They can show you a red screen and then show you a symbol that represents a political ideology that you don't like, and it's done. You're off course. You're thinking about their things. So it's that easy. And you want to know what the most powerful force in the entire universe is? Sure you do. You want to know. So I'm going to tell you. It is the sustained, undistracted human will. That's it. That's what builds your pyramids. That's what builds your bridges. That's what builds your skyscrapers. That's what transforms the surface of the earth. That's what creates novels, great works of art. That's what creates all of your, all your inventions, all your discoveries. The persistent application of discipline focused human will. There is no force greater in the universe than that even though that force in and of itself has nothing. So that is what you cultivate. You cultivate your will, your ability to, to apply yourself consistently, persistently to a task over time. That is the drop of water that can, that can melt them out over time. Further, one of the tools that you need in your toolbox is patience. There are things I can do with patience that I can't do with anything else. This is a hard tool for people to acquire, and it's a hard tool to use now, some people think that not caring about something and just you know, looking away from it is the same as patience. It's not. You still need to you know, care about the thing. What else can I tell you for now? I'll tell you this. Getting your things done, sometimes how you do the thing is more important than what you do, especially when you're interacting with other people. Like when you, when you need to work with somebody, maybe coordinate a presentation, you know, uh, all of your skill and discipline and focus, that's great. But when you're working with somebody else, just the attitude, just the vibes that that other person gets can become more important than all of your skills. For example, you know, you've got all the skills, but you've got a bad attitude and you, you know, don't like that person. So you're mean and harsh with them and you don't motivate them. Your skill isn't what's going to get the job done. Your ability to get along with people to demonstrate some patience, to demonstrate some self-control, to demonstrate some discipline, to show some appreciation. These are the qualities that will influence the other people, not your simple ability. You know, I don't mean to say simple. See, I have, you know, a fair amount of ability in various things, but I still struggle. Why? It is not for lack of ability. It is for lack of an understanding of human nature and getting along with people and making people feel good. I make them feel good. They make me feel good. Okay. Acts of service. This is what matters to men largely. You know, I've spoken about this as, you know, your six basic human needs, certainty, uncertainty, love and connection, significance. We have these basic needs. We see them fulfilled through various different acts. Some 
some people place great value on quality time, just spending time with somebody. Other people place great value on words and interaction and physical touch, a hug, a handshake, a pat on the back. Other people respond to acts of service. I did this for you. I made this video for you. I thought it would help. No, I don't want anything. I just want my friend to be in a better shape. That's all. Gifts, buying their affection, right? No, your neighbor's water shuts down, so you bring over a couple bottles, you know, five gallon jugs of bottled water, acts of service. You just bought his friendship. No, you've just demonstrated, you know, that you recognize your neighbor is in need and you can help them right now. And they, and, and, you know, if it's a good, if it's a good neighbor, they'll appreciate that because they need it, you know? You did what they needed when they needed it. That's a big deal. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate. Find my Cash App donation link and help out the Howard Dare channel if you can at this time. If you can't, I understand. You know, find yourself some good content that's motivating, that seems to have some insight, you know, to help you with the things that you're struggling with and try to make some progress, you know, just internally. So join me again, Howard Dare, as I hope to and plan to have more content for you. Thank you, everyone.